Hello, this is Professor C. P. Prakasham, former professor from International Institute for Population Sciences, Mumbai. I will be discussing about cluster analysis, part two, which explains k-mean cluster method. Cluster analysis is an exploratory data analysis, and it is a tool for organizing observed data in a meaningful clusters. based on the combination of variables cluster procedure hierarchical procedure and non hierarchical procedures in the hierarchical procedure which we have discussed in the earlier video that it takes into all the variables observations one by one and made into a later on into a single cluster whereas in the non hierarchical procedure k mean method two step cluster centroid based clustering distribution based clustering density based clustering and other methods but spss offers three methods of cluster analysis one is the hierarchical procedure second is the k mean method and third is the two step clustering for further you can see that cluster procedure it is given in the earlier video and the link is given here here k mean cluster method we will discuss this clustering technique attempts to find out a user specific number of clusters that is the k which are represented by their centroid clustering techniques there are two types of clustering techniques one is a k mean clustering another is a k moid clustering k mean defines a prototype in terms of a centroid that is mean of group of points whereas the k medoin is defined as a prototype of the most representative points for a group of points here that means it is nothing but a mode of a group of points which are represented by that k mean algorithm initially k value is decided by the researcher that is the user specified values of the number of how many number of clusters to be formed that is step number 1 each point is then assigned to the closest centroid this collection of points which are assigned to the centroid form a cluster step number 3 the centroid of each cluster is then updated on the points assigned to the cluster and then it will be form a new cluster the procedure b and c will be repeated until the clusters difference will be the obtained equal to zero and they will have the same mean of the cluster here we will illustrate with one example how to calculate k mean clustering procedure by using the spss by using the a car data a depot manager after selling 424 cars of five types namely sedan sports svu suv track wagon and is interested to know which type of car is giving more profit number 2 he is interested to know which type of car is in demand and what are the reasons for that so that he can improve his uh, profit margin as well as he can have a better management of selling the cars the data collected for the following variables v1 type of car v2 engine size v3 machine cylinder v4 horsepower v5 kilometer per liter in city and v6 kilometer per liter in highway and v7 what is the profit profit is calculated as sale price minus purchase price but always here in this example profit is taken as a positive variable here i will be explaining how to calculate the k mean by clusters by using the car data here you can see that the type of car and having the 424 observations and this is in the spss format if you see the variables 
then variable is the type of car and then engine size v3 is the cylinder v4 is the horsepower v5 is the kilometer per liter in ct and v6 is the kilometer per liter in the highway as well as the profit which is the market price from the invoice that will give you then how to analyze by using a species came in clusters here it has been decided four clusters analyze classify and then came in cluster click once you click it we want to clear label the cases by using the type that is what type of car it is then select variables engine sign cylinders horse power kilometer in city kilometer per liter in highway and profit all variables you select that and number of clusters we want to decide as a four it has been pre decided and iterations you will leave iterations as a default and then save once you click save it will ask the cluster membership means where the cases belongs to a particular cluster it will be decided by this and by giving the numbering then in the options if you go there click options then we are interested to find out the variations whether the significant variations are there between the clusters and homogeneity within the clusters by using the analysis of variance click that once you click it and say okay then output will generated in this output you will find iteration history this is the initial iteration history then final cluster centers as well as analysis of variance and then the number of cases in each cluster when you look at the here engine size is having the for the cluster number cluster number 1 is having the mean value 3.5051 that is centroid cylinders is the 6 and the, that is the centroid that is the mean horse power 235 that is the mean from this it has been selected when you look at the analysis of variance analysis of variance last column shows there is a significance effect out there that shows that within the uh, clusters it is homogeneous between the clusters there is a variations are there that is significant variations are there that is required for the cluster analysis and coming back to that number of cases in each cluster it shows that in the first cluster there are 58 158 cases are there and cluster number 2 14 are there cluster number 3 50 are there and cluster number 4 202 out of 424 then look at the this is the output view then look at the look at this and then click here and see the data view in the data view at the end you will find the cluster allocation that is the first observation is in the first cluster second observation in the third cluster like that you will get that this part if you save it then we can find further analyze it here in the output we are interested about the first uh, final cluster centers as well as the number of clusters for further discussion that will come across here after getting the output here we want to analyze it here it shows that cluster number 1 158 uh, cases are there we have to find out what are the uh, observations for that particular cases then go to the data view and then the last column will give you the each cluster number and the data pertaining to that then we will sort it out data sort cases according to the cluster numbers here cluster numbers are there and click here the entire data will be sorted out once it has sorted out then we will take the frequency of that particular data then is a descriptive then see the frequency once you click frequency then you will get the cluster number then click here whatever statistics we want we can do that also but we are interested by it is already calculated there then click here 
we will be getting the output. Here, two tables are there. One is the uh, cluster number 1, 158 cases and all these things. Then, here we have to analyze further and see that cross tabulation data by name of the type of the car. Therefore, if you take the rows are the type of the car and cluster cases are the columns, then click here, then you will get the cluster type also. Means, what are the type of the car and cluster number of cases, 1, 2, 3, 4 and then total is given 424. Therefore, we are interested about the two tables. One table is the mean centroid, that is the final cluster. Therefore, you click this, right click, copy, special and then we will copy it into Excel sheet and Excel sheet, worksheet, OK, open Excel sheet. Once you open the Excel sheet, then you will get the entire information, click here, then it will be pasted. Once this is pasted, you can get adjusted. Here it is given, the final cluster centers are there. And for the first cluster, which are the cases belong, second cluster, how many cases are there, third and fourth, we will copy another one. That is the name of the cluster, name of the cluster, and as well as the number of the cluster, and the type of the car. Right click here, special K, uh, copy special and into the Excel sheet, OK. Then we have already opened the Excel sheet, then copy it here and this is the our output data, which is required for the further analysis. We have pasted here and for the further analysis. Here are the two tables we copied from the ASPSS output. One is the final cluster center and another class classification between type of car and cluster number of cases. Then the question here, which type of car is giving more profit and which type of car is in demand and the reason for that. For that purpose, we will be restructuring these two tables into one single broad table for our analysis purpose. Then when you look at here, this will give the cluster number. These are the engine, cylinder, horsepower and are the variables and profit and number of cases for each cluster and then type of car is given and total number is given. Those two tables have been restructured into a single table. Now the first question is the, what is the maximum profit which is giving? Then you block that and then draw the bar diagram bar diagram which will give the representation of the data. Then here you plot this, the, uh, add labels for this. This will give you the highest is with the car number 2, that is profit wise cluster number 2 car is maximum profit and among this, if you look at the here, when you look at this column, this is the cluster number 2 which is having height. Therefore, cluster number 2, when you look at here, the number of cars are 14 and sedan, sports and other things. And this shows that sports car is having the maximum. Maximum profit is giving by the sports car. Then, come back to the, the second question is that what type of car is in demand? And the reason for that, for that, we'll, by cluster wise, we'll draw the gra uh, bar diagram and see that how it will be done. Then we'll see that inside the bar diagram, it shows clearly that this is the cluster number 1, cluster number 2, cluster number 3 and cluster number 4. Therefore, if you plot that data labels, it shows that 158 cars are belongs to the highest number, it belongs to the cluster number 1 and 202 that represents around about 67% of the cluster number 4. Then the further, among these clusters, which car is more in demand? Therefore, first of all, you 
draw a graph for the cluster number 4 and then see that how it is looking. When you draw a graph, then it shows that these are the cluster 1, 2, 3. There are 5 types of cars are there. Therefore, you label it. Those labels are When you label it, then you will get the idea that which type of car is sold. It shows that sedan car is sold, sold and then we will also give the data labels for that. When you see that, there are the highest number of cars are sold with the sedan type and sports car, wagoners and other things. Further question arises that uh, the cluster number 1 and cluster number 4, though they have sold highest, when you look at the profit wise, the profit is the lowest, uh, low and lowest in these two clusters. Then why the demand is more, that will come across in that. Here, this is the data from the SPSS. The second question is that which type of car is in demand and the reason for that. The data shows that the the engine size, cylinders, horsepower, etc., and the type of car by cluster wise, it is given. When you look at the above table, cars belong to the cluster number 1 and 4 are sold highest, and hence it is in demand. Among these cars sold in cluster 4, the highest demand than the cluster number 1. Then, coming back to the uh, per percentage of contribution of the cars, the cluster number one, highest number of cars are sold and which are the type of sedan. 63% contribution is there. In cluster four, highest number of cars sold, that is also sedan, 67.8%. Profit wise, it shows that in cluster one and four, the lowest, but they are the high, uh, highest demand because the kilometer per liter in city and kilometer per liter in highway found to be highest than the other two clusters, the different cars. Therefore, coming back to the conclusion, sports car is giving more profit. Sedan car is in great demand because it gives more kilometer per liter uh, as well as in highway. But profit wise, it is the lowest. Then the discussion here. Further, to identify the variables in each cluster and test of variability, one way analysis of variancy can be used. Here in the earlier, the k mean cluster method chooses the mean value or centroid value which has been given by k equals to whatever value is given for that clusters only it will decide. If it is differ and uh, inter-cluster variation and inter-variable variations can be determined. Therefore, the SPA we have to do the one-way analysis and then find out the significance for that. For that we have to use the SPSS procedure. One can use that. Therefore, go to the analyze, compare mean, one way analysis of variancy and in the one way analysis of variancy select all the variables and then give the cluster number variables where cluster number is saved and then this is the variable cluster number is the variable and by using the post hoc to keep significance 0 0.05 and save ok that will give the uh, significance level whether it is the inter cluster or within the cluster variations are there or not significance level can be identified one of the limitation in k mean cluster is that the k the number of clusters is already predetermined by the researcher there may be some other number but it is been restricted by the researcher with the a priori knowledge of the data set and then the centroids is the cluster mean. The clusters are selected on the basis of the centroid. Outliers are not, is not eliminated or included as a member in the 
suitable cluster thank you very much please like it share it subscribe it thank you very much